Shyness as a Personality Trait Part 4 Cynical Shyness Personality Psychology, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno, Professor Michael Botwin. In our last video lecture on shyness, we're going to talk about a radical form of shyness that happens at an extremely low base rate. And that's something that Carducci and Neri labeled as cynical shyness. And they believe that cynical shyness is something that can convert into violence. Now, it doesn't always happen this way, but it is a possibility. So, let me read you a little quote from them. And Neri and Carducci say that results indicate that the individuals involved in seven deadly high school shootings within the last decade clearly had characteristics of cynical shyness. Most of what we see in individuals with this extreme form of shyness is they tend to be male and desperately want to be socially engaged with other people. But often lacking in social skills, these individuals get rejected by their peers and avoid social connections because of the resulting pain. Now, this is a very interesting phenomena, and as I said, a low base rate one. So let's look at cynical shyness in the context of school violence and murders. Now, in cynical shyness, an individual experiences continual rejection by a group. No one likes being rejected. We all experience rejection during our lives but it's really hard for some people to deal with rejection and oftentimes they don't have adequate coping skills. Now, in the cynically shy males, the feelings of hurt and intensity ultimately turn into anger. And we've all had this type of experience. We've been hurt and we've been hurt over again in our lives and eventually we get angry about something. But the school uh, murderers who are cynically shy go one step further. They end up alone and start hating the people who rejected them. Now the cynical shy male typically distances himself from the hurt. If you distance yourself from the hurt and you essentially dehumanize the people who you hate, it makes it far easier to retaliate with violence as happens with the school shootings. Now, several years ago on our campus at Fresno State, one day this showed up on social media and it basically says this, the time is now 3 p.m. I will release my frustrations, tired of dirty looks, get rejected and being talked about because how I dress. My choice of weapon, M4 carbine, and I will take a headshot at a hot blonde. Well, fortunately, our excellent university campus police immediately got on this and got the person and put him into custody. Now, he always claimed that this was never something that was a threat he was going to carry out. He was just extremely frustrated. He may not have met all the categories of clinical shy, cynical shyness, but he fit with many of them. The young man who sent this message was a walk-on to the Fresno State football team. He had been the star football player in his high school. Now, Division I football is a pretty elite group of people, and there is a cast system in the football team. There are people in and out, there are cliques, 
and generally the lowest person in the pecking order are the walk-ons. So he went from being the star high school football player on his team uh, to a walk-on that was doing virtually nothing on the Fresno State team. He felt rejected. He felt like he wasn't getting the attention he was warranted. And he turned that hostility into hatred. Now, fortunately, he didn't carry these acts out. And he was removed from campus and no longer is in the area. But the most, excuse me, grab a sip of coffee here. Ironic thing about this is that our university has an excellent warning system where our cell phones go off if there is a campus threat so that everyone knows something's up and we can deal with it. Well, it turns out this incident happened when I was giving this lecture on cynical shyness to a class. That was kind of freaky. The good thing is no one was hurt, no one was injured, and we were able to move on with things. But we're an open campus, and it led to lots of discussions about what we can do to increase campus security. And we're fortunate that, as I said earlier, we have an excellent campus police department who are on top of things. And we all just have to be vigilant about such things. Now, Patterson and Dunsley, two social sociologists, excuse me, have uncovered four factors in school shootings in general. And we can't say that every school shooting is the result of cynical shyness by any means. It's most likely exacerbated with other things as they discuss. For example, Peterson and Dempsey say that early childhood trauma and exposure to violence is a precipitating factor. Anger over recent events and feelings of suicidality figure in. You can see with our previous example, the young man was angered about being what he considered disrespected on campus and was just getting upset. Third factor, being inspired by other school shooters. There is a subculture where people do look up to these individuals who commit murders on school campuses. I refuse to call them shooters. It glorifies them in a sense. I consider them murderers. The final factor that Peterson and Densley find is that you have to have the means to carry out the attack. And you'll see this in the next slide where I go over Nattery and Carducci's uh, characteristics of the cynically shy person. You have to have access to weapons. So here are the 32 individuals that were killed in the Virginia Tech murders. Uh, I'd rather put the victims there than the uh, murderers. And this, as you would imagine, caused much soul searching across campuses, across the entire country. So let's look at these other factors here. Cynically shy individuals generally have a lack of empathy towards other people. Remember, we talked about how they dehumanize their potential victims. They have a low tolerance for frustration. They don't deal with frustration well. They have anger issues. Probably one of the biggest things is they get social rejection from their peers, or at least they think they're being rejected. They generally don't have a good family life. And as we previously mentioned, they have access to weapons. Now, when the Virginia Tech murderer committed his heinous act, uh, 
I remember hearing the initial news reports. And the initial news reports was that it was a man who had uh, experienced rejection from a girlfriend and the breakup caused him to do this horrendous violence. Later, it turned out, the girl who was mentioned in these things didn't really know the guy at all. The guy was a very shy person. He was very detached. He spent most of his time in his apartment, and he built up this big fantasy life. In fact, you find this with this type of murderer. Generally, you'll find that they write long manifestos on how they've been treated badly by the world, as the Virginia Tech murderer did. And usually they include a remedy for all of the world's problems, which is generally basically to let that person be in charge and then the world will be good for everyone. So these people have some definite problems and unfortunately they lash out in violence. The only relative good news is it's a low base rate activity. Zero would be best. Hopefully we won't have any more of these outbursts. But if you followed them at all yourself, as the previous slide indicated, they usually come in waves and there will be a school murder incident and then you'll get copycats who glorify the murderers. So, as I said, there's a lot of other factors here, considerable mental health problems, but thinking about the cynically shy may be a good avenue to look at. It may be a good thing for us in educational settings to look for signs of lack of empathy or outburst or things like that from individuals. And hopefully we won't have any more of these incidents or if they start appearing, we can circumvent them. I'll get off my soapbox here. Well, I want to end our shyness series of lectures, not on the cynical note, but with a little fun, which I know is kind of ironic after the last topic. But, you know, I like my cartoon, so let's un I, eh, let's finish, excuse me, hard changing gears that fast, with some products available from the pathologically shy image store. It's an old cartoon, this is a takeoff on the old sharper image stores. So first slide. As a tactic to help out the shy person, you hire a real loud guy who'll go everywhere you go and attract attention away from you. Then, if you want to be by yourself in our modern office environments, you can get cubicle size Phoenician blinds. Also, you may want to invest in some full face sunglasses so your embarrassment doesn't show, your red face doesn't show when you're embarrassed. This is my favorite one of the series, the self-effacing license plates, uh, as opposed to the extreme vanity plates. I'm just okay or about average. Well, in my constant quest for new cartoons uh, and my interest in evolution and technology and other things, I can't resist ending my shyness lecture with this final cartoon. So if you're a shy person, remember you have to promote your new ideas. Don't leave your sports car sitting in your cave when the best that your cave dweller neighbors can do is invent the wheel. So if you have issues with shyness, they can be remediated. There's lots of people that can help you. At our university, we have a health center with some excellent folks who can help you with your shyness. And remember, shyness is a way of being. It's not a bad thing. It's just how some of us are. 
and you can learn to live with it. Fortunately, to a large extent, we outgrow it. But don't shy away from taking care of your shyness. We'll see you next time on Personality Psychology. Bye now. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2020, Professor Michael Bottling. All rights reserved.